say amen again for our young people. Amen, amen. Got our mind made up and I won't turn back. If we could just bow our heads as we begin this morning. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship your name. We ask now, Lord, that as we prepare to talk a little bit more as friends and as family about what we can do to enhance the ministry here at 31st Street, we pray that your spirit would give us direction and guidance, and that when we leave from this place, we will know that we have spent time with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. For just a few minutes before we break up into groups, I want to ask you a question. How many of you like food? If you didn't hear me, let me say, how many of you enjoy food? He has more hands now. Okay. Uh, let me just pick, pick on a few people. Let me see those hands again. Sister Bonnie, tell me why you like food. I'm sorry? Tell me why you enjoy food. It's good. She likes food because it's good. Uh, who else had their hand up? Principal, why do you like food? Because um, when I'm hungry, I'm weak. And when I eat, it gives me energy. Food gives you energy. Nourishment for the body. Okay. Food gives us nourishment. I saw some hands on this side. Why do we enjoy food? Anybody? I know I saw some. Okay. Tastes good. Because it tastes good. Okay. Okay. All right. One more. Why do we enjoy food? Enrique. God blessed me with some good taste buds, so I always enjoy what is the set before me. <laughs> Okay, okay. So we have different reasons why we enjoy, why we like food. Um, how many of you realize that there are actually three functions of food? Anybody knew that? Three functions of food. The first one is a physiological function. The reason why we enjoy food, because food actually through a complex process of digestion and absorption, assimilation, and excretion, food 
provides us with calories that are then metabolized in the body to provide us with energy. We talked about that before. And so when we talk about food giving us energy, that's important. Why? Because energy is required for all of the functions of the body. You need energy for your heart to beat. You need energy for homostasis. You need energy for the function of the brain and other vital organs of the body. And so food is important because food primarily provides us with energy. I like that because when we think about what we're doing here at 31st Street, that energy or that food giving us that, that providing us something comes through the area of nurture. Pastor Lynch is responsible for our area of nurture. Those of you that have been with us before, you understand that we've, we've gone through this and I'm gonna ask if Elder Johnson and Pastor Lynch would help me out and make sure that everyone has a copy of this. But nurture is simply the process of caring for and encouraging the growth or development of someone or something. And so the purpose why we have nurture here at 31st Street is to ensure that every member of the body, every person from our most senior member to our youngest member is being properly taken care of. So nurture is important. As you'll see in your, um, your handout, there are some specific areas of nurture that we've highlighted here at 31st Street. And we're asking that, for, actually let me do this, how many of you have already taken your member uh, ministry assessment, your inventory? I know we had some names before, we've done this before. If you have not already done that, I want you to make sure you have one of these outlets because we're going to be using them today so that we can figure out where God wants to use us in ministry. But when we look at nurture, we've highlighted several areas under nurture that we are using here at 31st Street. Those areas are in the area of education, in culinary or in the kitchen, in health and temperance, home and school, stewardship, religious liberty, Sabbath school, working with our youth, pathfinders and adventurers, the social area, treasury, as well as our deacons and deaconess. These are the areas that we've highlighted that would fall under nurture in our church. And so in just a few minutes, when we break up into groups, if you already know that here are where some of my passions are, I, I like to work with pathfinders, I like to, to help out with teaching, or I like to cook in the kitchen, then what we want to do is when we split up into groups, we want you to go into the area for nurture. And when we go into that group, all we're simply going to be doing today is not listening to someone present, but we're going to be talking together as peers to figure out what can we do in our areas of ministry to help enhance the overall ministry here at 31st Street. Does that make sense to everyone? So we're simply coming together to find out with my gifts and with my passions, with the skills that God has given me, what can we do in our area? What can we specifically do through the group, through the area of nurture? And that may, will include those different areas I already mentioned that will help enhance the ministry here. But as I said, food serves three purposes. So the first one was physiological. The second function of food is a social function. It's social. Uh, how many of you uh, realize that food is actually the thing that brings many people together? Have you ever been to a wedding with no food? And even on the reverse end, I mean, we think about it. Have you ever gone to a funeral of even food? We, food is something that brings us together. And so when you think of it from a, from a social aspect, because it binds people together, where we talked about Thanksgiving just a few minutes ago and about what we're planning to do. Food is something that, that helps bring us together. When we think about that, it, it kind of lends into the area of outreach. Outreach, coming together to do things. We've defined outreach here at 31st Street as simply uh, the price that a congregation joyfully pays for the privilege of calling ourselves followers of Christ. Uh, Jordan read the, the scripture text earlier. We all know it, the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Ghost. And then I like that last part. It says doing what? Teaching them to do what? Observe all things. Christ, when he was here, in fact, it was, if you think about it, in Mark chapter 6, Jesus was very clear. He told his disciples, 
go out two by two. In other words, Jesus didn't have anybody that was a part of the group that was just sitting there doing nothing. What am I saying? At 31st Street, we're here to help finish the work. That means that it's not just the work of Pastor Mac or Pastor Lynch or the elders or the deacons or any other officer of the church, but just like Jesus had every disciple do something, we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to do something here. And so when it comes to the area of outreach, this is the area where Sister Mona Cita Holloman has so graciously volunteered to work with this area. She is going to be our leader in this area, and we've got some specific areas of ministry that we've de defined that would come under outreach. Bible work, personal ministry, disabilities, communications, website development, an interest coordinator, community services, children's ministry, family ministry, women's ministry, men's ministry, singles ministry, marriage ministry, athletics, and also our youth ministry. And so again, if you know already that some of your passions, some of the things that you are excited about, they fall under this area, then when we break up, then you would go in the group that is under outreach. And again, what we're doing is just coming together saying specifically, now what can we do in my area? How can my little one little idea help to enhance the whole overall growth of 31st Street? So that's outreach. So we looked at the physiological function, we looked at the social function, but food also serves a third function. And the third function is a psychological function. I'm sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. Food always gives us a good feeling. Some of us talked about that feeling before. It makes us feel good when we've eaten. How many of you are going to feel much better after Pastor Mac has finished and you can go home and eat? <laughs> Look, everybody's smiling right there. Food makes you feel good. Worship is about an experience. And that experience with God should make us feel good. Amen. We've defined worship, again, as what? Not just a routine not a tradition. It's not a passive spectator sport, but worship is an event. It's a personal interaction between us as the created and God as our creator. Worship is a memorable encounter with God. And so when we look at worship, we've highlighted some areas in our church, specific areas of ministry that we would think would fall under worship. Those would be of our greeting and hospitality, the ushers, the prayer warriors, the prayer ministry, audio and video, the music ministry, and then praise and worship. So again, if you, are, if you feel that these are the areas where God has gifted you, you have an, a passion to work in these areas, then when we split up, this is where we want you to go so that you can share your ideas there. Now, for those that have not had the opportunity to fill out a member ministry uh, interest inventory, in your packet, actually on the next page, uh, you'll have what we call the highlighted version. Uh, and I'll just take a quick minute to go through it. At 31st Street, we want to stay in SHAPE. SHAPE deals with, it's an acronym that deals with several things. S, meaning our spiritual gifts. H, what is our heart? What are the things we're passionate about? A, what are our abilities? P, stands for our uh, personality personality, temperament things, and then E for our experiences or our testimonies. What I'd like for you to do, if you have not already had the opportunity to fill out your inventory, then as we break up into our groups, uh, you kind of, and, and you, nobody knows you better than you. If you know there's an area that you feel that, you're, that God has called you to do, then we're going to split up now at this time, and what we're going to simply ask is that we would help one another. Um, we have only a limited amount of space, and so what I'll do is this. Those that, are, that know that you'd like to, to assist or have some ideas about working in the area of worship, then I'm going to ask that you would just quickly bring your chair, and we're going to meet up in this section here in the front. So if you fall under the area of worship, then you can come up here to this area. We will have outreach that will probably be our, lar our largest group take over on this side. Outreach will be on this side. And if we could turn our chairs that way, and then nurture will be on this side, and Pastor Lynch, if you'll be on the wall, and then people will be there on that side. So nurture on this side, outreach on this side, worship up here in this area. Let's take about 25, 30 minutes, just kind of brainstorming ideas. What 
can we do in our specific area to enhance the overall mission of our church? Then we'll come together, we'll just quickly write down what those are, and then we'll let you go for today. So again, at this time, if you do that, and then as you're doing that, if you have not already filled out your inventory, please do that so we can get your information as well. Okay, as we come in, just rest them, rest them over there for me. Okay, folks, we want to we wanna wrap this up, but we need your help. If we could just come back in and find our seats quickly. Do I have to call your names individually? Do I have to call you out by name? Thank you so much. The group in the back, if we can just come back in, please. Find our seats. We want to let you go, but we just want to kind of highlight some stuff very quickly. So let me do this. As you're finding your seats, let me say thank you to each, each of you for that. I know it's a little bit different, but we're trying to figure out what we can do to make things better. So with that said, I want to invite my, uh, my fellow colleagues to come up here with me. Sister Mona Cita, Pastor Lynch. And what I want to do is, in your groups, we talked about some different things that we can do to make things better here. We don't, want to, we don't have the time to go into all of them right now, but I want to highlight one thing in, in nurture. What is one area that nurture said that we can do here at 31st Street that will help make things better here? What's, what's the one thing we can do? My scribe here. Just one. Say treat others as you want yeah <laughs> so, okay that's so that's the golden rule treat others as and I, I like to use this as you want to be treated we just ask for one not one b you can type up 1B and you can submit it, but we just want one for this right now because we have three things right here. So that's our area, nurture. Treat others as you want to be treated. Outreach. Outreach. What was one area in outreach? One thing that we said we can do better here at 31st Street. We can better serve our community by understanding the demographics and the needs of the community and reaching out to the women and children um, who need us. Okay, so understanding the area around us. That's huge. Um, that's, that's a big one. Um, and let me just kind of highlight on that. How many of you realize how much our demographics have changed, say, in the last 20 years? I'll even take it further. How many of you realize how much our demographics, and I'll use this, when you look around you, even in church, how many of you realize how much your demographics have changed in the last four years? Okay. Many people have said to me, this is a different church than when I first arrived, okay? Different culture, different things. And so we're being, being aware of those things, reaching out to others. We like that, okay? Very good. So nurture one, outreach two, uh, worship, which was my area. Anybody want to share? Well, I'll just say one of the things that we, we came up with is, and a lot of things that we looked at was making sure that we do a little bit better as it relates to structure. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, for example, there's a, just a little bit too much um, freedom. Some of us just feel like, look how long it took us to get back in order right here. Even though we're not in the sanctuary, we still have to remember it's still God's house. Uh, and so there's some things that we've talked about, ways that we can help 
address our worship service so that our function and our focus is on God and not on us. What I'd like for us to do, and we have each one of the areas, we have the information for nurture, we have it for outreach, we have it for worship. What we're going to do is combine all of those things together, look at them together, and then when we have our next now Sabbath, we'll be looking at those ways and then again we'll find out, okay, now, how have we improved since the last time? What have we done to make this better as, as a situation, okay? And remember, this is something that takes all of us, okay? It's not just one or two people that's going to get it done. It takes all of us. More hands make light work, okay? So if all of us can commit to making it better, then when Jesus comes back, all of us would hear him say, well done. Thank you all for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to just close out our service now. And so we'll have the offering for worship. I'm sorry, structure was the word for worship. Okay. Sister Todd is going to come now as we have our oh, offering. Who has the offering? Cindy has the offering. We have the two Cindys going to be closing us out. <laughs> 